podcast and Hawkins right again again Good day to you. It is I, Justin Hawkins. This is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts. Today, um, I'm looking at this video with a, a compilation of times that um, people in the music trade have just walked out of interviews. Um, I think it's quite an interesting phenomenon because, uh, you know, you do an interview and invariably the things you say look different when, when they're written down. That's just, that's normal. Um, but sometimes you get the sense that uh, it's going to be a hatchet job and uh, you just sort of, something instinctively tells you that the person does not have your best interests at heart um, and are looking to do some kind of stitch up in the in the writing. And uh, sometimes it's just, the interview is just a twat, that, that happens as well. Um, but you do, I think you'd be surprised how often this sort of compulsion to stand up and leave occurs. Um, Mainly because, as I've mentioned in one of the earlier videos, it's not the thing that musicians sign up to do, is it? I mean, I don't think anybody goes, yeah, I really want to be uh, a touring musician so that I can speak to journalists all the time. And there's no offence to journalists that are listening. Um, because, you know, a lot of them are lovely, but part of the, the sort of challenge is to figure out which ones are lovely and which ones are there to take you down. Um, I don't know if it's any worse or better than it used to be. I don't do as many interviews because people just aren't interested in what I have to say. That's probably a good thing for them and me, I think. Um, but I have had occasion to walk out of an interview. I did one, I w me and my brother walked out of one, that was, it might have been K-Rock, years and years ago, t getting on for, I don't know, 19 or 20 years ago. And um, it was like a chat, a talk show, a talk radio thing. And I think there was, um, somebody had called in and was complaining about some sort of sexual abuse or even a rape allegation. I don't actually remember because it was back in the days when I was, uh, you know, Making some lifestyle choices that I, I don't make anymore. Um, but uh, it just seemed to me that the, the hosts of this thing were taking the piss out of somebody who was, who'd called in looking for help, really. And they were just teasing her and making fun of her. And um, so me and my brother just thought they were twats and we didn't want to talk to them. We left. And I'd just like to say that um, uh, we're a little bit shocked about the, this programme. We, we weren't really informed as to kind of what it was and how serious it was and and the sort of things we thought it would be based around the darkness and it's not this will be the last uh, you'll hear of us on this show tonight I'm afraid but yeah but you know thanks for calling in thanks for being a, a great fan and thanks for your support and I'm sorry to everyone who listened who's got questions for us but this isn't us I would not feel qualified to talk to any of these people however immediately after that it was like there was some stuff in the UK press saying oh you'll, they'll never break America if they uh, behave like that over there I was like well then we'll never break America too bad um, sometimes principles are at stake that's what I'm saying here um, so I'm, I'm going to watch these uh, these 10 musicians walking out and I think we can decide together who was right to do so who was wrong to do so why it's funny if it's funny if it's sad who the fuck do the interviewers think they are who the fuck do the bands think they are I don't know maybe it's a grey area we'll find out um, so w do you know what um What's the meaning of your music and, and all that stuff? <laughs> what a question. Do you know what's the meaning of, the, of your music and all that stuff? This guy knows what he's doing. We have no really uh, huge meaning or self-defining sort of thing. Yeah, that was a dodgy question. Fair enough. Listen, we have like three minutes left. If okay. you want to do an interview, do an interview. But I don't want to be watching bits of tape. It's ridiculous. Oh, I think they're asking Brian May to look at bits of tape. So he's got a tiny window of opportunity to speak to Brian May and he wants to play some tapes to him. The um, thing about Brian May is like he's a lovely man, obviously fantastic, um, calming presence. And whenever you see him speak, is is just... But I think if you know what you look for, there's a rage bubbling just under the surface. That's what makes him a rock and roller. He's the one in Queen that wanted to play all the riffs. You know, he's the guy. It's fucking Brian May, don't waste his time. Um, because time is extraordinarily precious. And if anyone understands that, it's the astrophysicist, Dr. Brian May. So don't fuck with him. Oh, I'm sorry, he doesn't work. I'm sorry, guys. I love it when he gets up and walks out. Perfect. I'll tell you that, come on. I'll, I'll see you. Sorry. Yes, Brian. What kind of stuff you do for fun? Are you doing anything weird? 
wake up, go to breakfast, go to a gym. Come go on. To like, I swear, I do it every morning. Nothing, nothing, um, I'm not going to tell you any of the negative shit I do. No, are you crazy? I mean, you dress like a monkey and swing from stuff, do you? Come on, man, don't be a dick. Is that what kind of question is that? Come on, man, don't be a dick. I don't think that's an experienced interviewer. Um, I think if somebody was saying things like that to you on your own bus, it would be a bit. I don't know. I think that'd be it. Would be all right in the neutral territory. I think some of it's about context, really. If somebody's on your bus and they're asking stupid questions like that, just kind of like, well, I'd rather just, you know, there's the the. The infringement isn't just on your time; it's also on your space, isn't it? And your, I don't know, your your home. Going to a man's home and asking him if he dresses up like a monkey and swings from stuff. <sighs> Bloody outrageous! Get the f off my bus. Yeah, now that's what he wanted to get from. He's actually. I think the interviewer has won in this instance because he wanted that reaction. That's the whole point of asking those. <laughs> Really daft questions. Interesting thing about about your position in life that you get people you don't even know coming up to you asking you to say, whenever I'm in town, I always listen to such and such radio station. This Nirvana one doesn't seem like it's a real interview. Uh, it certainly doesn't look scheduled. It's like a bloke's just walked up to their table and started interrogating them with a camera and a microphone. No. Does, does that bug you? All right. Later. don't know. They, I think the interviewer looks like a total... Twat. Um, in that instance, but I mean, I suppose it's hustling. You know, that's maybe that's the gig. Maybe that's just what you have to do. Just get as, get try and get a couple of words out of uh, Kurt Cobain. Just arsehole. Phil, oh, I don't need those other two. I can knock out. <laughs> oh no, this is a classic. The Bee Gees. Oh my god. I don't. I can't even remember well, we why. At the same time, called "Don't Forget to Remember," which was. Yeah. I've, I've forgotten that one. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Clark? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've never had anyone walk out before, but... Uh, well, uh, yeah. we are a tosser, pal. You're a tosser, pal. Wow. I love the uh, flash of concern across Clive Anderson's face. He probably thought it was an innocent joke, you know. I've been in that situation as well. There was a, an, 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 an Italian guy interviewing us, and, and, and um, it's when you try and drive a wedge between brothers, that's that never goes well for you. Um, that happened to us in Italy years ago. It was... Uh, not dissimilar to this, actually, because um, eventually you lose both. <laughs> That's what happens. You try and, try and come between brothers. No matter what the n nature of the relationship is, they'll both get up and leave. Uh, and then the third one will eventually join them. Well, you can stay in uh, just... Well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it, walking out of an interview can often be the most eventful thing that happens within it. Um, they're doing the uh, interview as a favour, really, because give them something to write about or something to... Um, some reason to re-watch. I mean, how dull would those interviews have been were it not for these moments? How dull would life be were it not for these moments? Viva la walkout. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts, and uh, watch one of these two videos. I'm leaving. <laughs>